Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Long time no see. Life kind of got in the way of uploading videos and then I got punched in the face by a cold which has just not been pretty at all and also you can still hear it, I still sound not like normal but I, I feel better and so I'm, I'm, I apologise for my very congested nasally sounding voice. That's why I didn't post a video last week, <laughs> basically. I had the cold. Anyway, you might be wondering what kind of video is this? You know, this is not hockey related, this is not baseball related, which is obviously all that usually I talk about. But I figured the whole Taylor Swift NFL debacle that's been going on, I felt like I wanted to make a small rambly video on it, given that I am both a Swifty and a sports fan. Does this make me qualified to talk about the issue? Probably not, but I'm going to do it anyway. And just before we get started, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel and also like this video. It is coming in to NHL season and MLB post-season, so I'll be posting lots of content, so please subscribe. Thanks. Let's dive in. Taylor Swift is one of the biggest icons right now in culture, in the music industry. She's had a very impressive career so far, which is still just growing. And she has a very diehard fan base of Swifties. Meanwhile, Travis Kelsey is an NFL player for the Kansas City Chiefs. He was drafted in 2013. And with two Super Bowls under his belt, he is currently known as one of the greatest tight ends. Football fans and Swifties are not a common crossover, but with Taylor Taylor in attendance at Kelsey's last two games, it seems that there is a possible relationship between the two and massive controversy has sparked out of this. Sitting with Kelsey's mum Donna for the game at the Arrowhead Stadium against the Chicago Bears on September 24th, it became a sort of meme running joke a fun little enticement to get Swifties into watching football, I don't know. With constant broadcast references and social media nods to Taylor Swift's attendance at the game. The following week, just there, Sunday, October 1st, she attended the Chiefs game in New York and the NFL's broadcast and social media still remained very much focused on Taylor, much to the dislike of many football fans. And this discontentment was highlighted even further through last night's game, as I'm filming this, the Monday night game with my team, the New York Giants, let's not talk about it, as they took on the Seahawks when Taylor's movie was promoted up on the big screen and it received many boos from the crowd in response. It kind of seemed like Taylor Swift was taking over the NFL with social media bios and posts all being centered around her. It really seemed like the NFL's marketing strategy over the last couple of weeks has really been concentrated on Swifties. It's a certainly unusual marketing strategy to take. So let's just, I'm just gonna ramble about this. I don't have very many points written down about this. Let's just, let's just enter into my brain and my train of thoughts. So first of all, let's discuss, is this an attempt at marketing to a new audience or is this simply a case of annoying your existing fans? There's always a balance to strike uh, when you're marketing anything, that you need to entice new people into something, but you also need to keep your existing customer or fan base completely engaged as well. You don't want to just focus on the people that you already have. You obviously want to grow and develop that. That is what marketing is about. But equally so, probably your most loyal existing fan base or customers or clients are the ones who are really keeping you in business. And so you need to make sure that you're not annoying them in doing so just to get new people involved. It's, it's a very fundamental part of marketing. It's a complete balancing act and it's very hard to get right. But given that the NFL sells out, has the best like sports attendance in North America, the NFL is successful with its own fans. And the last thing you want to do is annoy those fans. Most of them have been going for years, it's a generational thing, and the NFL is an integral part of American culture, of sports culture, and it's not something you want to mess with. New fans are already coming into the game. The NFL does an excellent job with their international marketing. They, the UK has a huge NFL fan base. The London series is going on right now, even though you probably wouldn't know because everything is about Taylor Swift. But actually, the London series is currently going 
going on. It's it's sold out, like it's completely sold out. And there is an evolving fan base of people watching the NFL. Even people who aren't diehard football fans often tune into Sunday night games because they find it interesting or they find it exciting to watch or they might not fully understand the game, but it's still entertaining to them. So the NFL is not stagnant in any way. Its growth has not stopped. It's not slowed down. It is a very popular sport. It's one of the most popular sports in the whole world and it is growing internationally season upon season. So there's no concerns here that the NFL is suddenly losing revenue and losing fans. So why then does it seem like a portion of this already very short NFL season has been taken up by marketing the game to swift days while annoying your existing fans. I can't quite understand it. I think maybe it's been perceived as trying to market to women better, but I have some issues with this because one, a lot of women already watch the game and you don't need to go through Taylor Swift in order to market to them. Please, we just want equality and to be treated like like men are in the game, that's all that we want. A lot of people, including myself, already like Taylor Swift and the NFL. It's not something that needs to really be crossed over that much. And I just have a generally quite big issue with things taking away from the game too much. As I said, the NFL has a very short season. Contrast this to the MLB. The MLB has the longest season you can imagine and ballparks are constantly filled with other forms of entertainment to make it family friendly and keep people coming even if what they're watching on the field perhaps isn't quite as good. Especially before the new pitch clock rule was introduced, the MLB games went on for quite a long time. There was a lot more stop start, it was slower paced and so so it felt necessary that the MLB had in arena things that kept fans entertained. Ballparks are so fun, they're literally so fun and I don't know why anyone would have an issue with it because you get to watch something great, you get to have fun in these arenas with all their bars, restaurants and other entertaining things that are always going on but you also get to watch the sport. I think that is a great balance and I think that really works especially just given that the season is so long and so you might need other things to entice fans into the ballpark sometimes. Sometimes. The NFL, that's completely different. It's such a short season. There's very few games. Sunday night football is a massive tradition for people. It's huge. And so I don't think the other extracurriculars are really needed in the same way that sometimes it is in baseball. Hi, this is Editing Victoria here. And I just wanted to add in that I know the comparison I'm making here is a little bit indirect just because I'm talking about an in-game experience versus on a broadcast but I think that the point is still relevant that there's times where perhaps other forms of entertainment are needed within the game and then there's times where they aren't and that's basically what I was trying to establish here. Okay back to the video. People are tuning in to the NFL because they want to watch it. They're attending games and they're watching the broadcast because they want to watch it. They don't need other things to be focused on that are detracting from the game that's just annoying to most people. Yes, you might get some Taylor Swift fans in for some Chiefs games, but the reality is if they don't like football, if the relationship doesn't pan out, or when Taylor goes back on tour, which is very soon by the way, and she's no longer attending games, that viewership is going to fizzle out very quickly. And in the meantime, you might have lost some respect and viewership from your actual loyal fan base. I think the majority of football fans want to be watching the game when they're watching a broadcast, not focusing on any celebrities. I don't think there's anything wrong with the odd pan out to the crowd when Kelsey gets a touchdown or the to know that Taylor Swift's in the stadium. I don't think that's the problem. I think it's the sheer number of references that were made to her during the broadcast and on the social media platforms. I think it was overkill. I think they took something that originally was quite lighthearted, funny, and was actually enticing people in. The viewership of young women watching the sport did go up. And yes, some people who are Taylor Swift fans may get really into the NFL and may keep watching. That is fantastic. But is it really worth taking the risk of really annoying all of your very loyal existing fans? I'm not sure. I think there reaches a point where focusing on one celebrity person or on anything else detracts away from the game that you're watching and I think on Sunday the NFL reached that. I also read some conspiracy theories that Taylor Swift had other reasons for dating Travis Kelsey which is not true. Have you seen how much 
money she's making right now with her successful tour, movie and re-recordings. She does not need a PR relationship, so I completely disagree with that. I also don't think Travis Kelsey is dating her for any other reason than genuinely being interested in her either. He already has a very successful career. The two are very successful individuals who clearly have come across each other and ultimately I, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but the NFL also needs to not make it that big of a deal, in my opinion. I'm also not going to comment on their relationship because as a long time Taylor Swift fan, I've seen her being bashed for her relationships in the past and it really sucks because it seems like the NFL has sort of enabled the slut shaming and the misogyny to actually come back more because they have pushed Taylor too much on people who didn't want to consume that much Taylor Swift and that's not her fault but the problem is because people are so annoyed by it they're taking it out on her but all she's doing is attending NFL games she's doing nothing wrong in my view she is going to a football game that the person that she seems to be dating is playing it she's doing absolutely nothing wrong the broadcasts are the one pushing it the social media platforms are the one pushing it but the backlash is coming on Taylor and it's just not fair, I don't think, I don't think it's right. It's not her fault. You can be angry at the NFL, but you shouldn't be angry at Taylor Swift for attending games. It's 2023, we are not getting mad at a woman attending a football game, okay? But we can get mad at the NFL's kind of bizarre marketing strategy they've got going on here. So those are my thoughts. Leave me a comment down below. What do you think about the ongoing NFL times Taylor Swift crossover. As I said, I'm a massive Swifty. I'm going to the Eras Tour next year. I managed to secure a ticket, thank God. But I'm also a massive sports fan and I love the NFL. So I fit into both realms. And so I just thought I would share, share my views. Um, but please stop hating on Taylor Swift. Any issues you have, blame the NFL, I beg of you. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment down below with your thoughts and I'll be back soon with more sports content from across the pond in Scotland. And I'm really sorry that I sound so bunged up and nasally. I'm aware of it and it's so annoying. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. See ya.